Lord. But, uh, Brother Jesse, the handouts, I think there's some left over in the office in a brown little thing. I know Brother Dell usually do it, but he's tied up at work tonight. Um, we'll get those handouts. And I know I probably, because we, <laughs> we were off last week, so we get a little bit off because we take a Wednesday off, and it's like got to try to get back into our Wednesdays. But if you, don't, if you don't have one or you didn't bring a handout, Brother Jesse is going to give one to you. Now, tonight's message is super, super important. So I'm going to ask for everybody to revere tonight. If you can hold your restroom breaks and hold all your talking and all your, you know, going back and forth, if you can just please hold that tonight. Because tonight's message, I prepared many, many hours today to bring the message for you guys because I, I just know my husband and I can discern the things that are going on in the spirit realm and the, th the heaviness in the earth right now and the effect that it's having on the body of Christ. So um, I took extra time today to prepare. And so everybody have a handout. Okay, amen. So we're going to do a little review because we weren't here last Wednesday. And we're talking about around here that God truly answers prayers. And Brother Jesse is still passing them out. Anybody else? All right. Everybody got one. So everybody's settled. Everybody's good. I got your undivided attention because it's not me up here. It's the Holy Ghost. And we submit to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So God truly answers prayers, does he not? God truly answers prayers. Sometimes he answers some prayers a little quicker. And sometimes he answers prayers, other prayers a little later. But all in all, God truly answers prayers. And we're talking about the steps of God truly answering prayers. And um, everybody, everybody remember that the first step was decide what you want from God. You got to make that decision. Be decisive about what you want from God. Remember what James talks about. He says you got to ask in faith and you cannot doubt when you decide what you want, you got to ask knowing that God is going to answer. That's step one. You, have, you can't be indecisive. Well, I'm not sure. I hate asking for things, Lord. No, you have to be decisive. If it's in God's will, and it belongs to us, amen, his promises are yes and amen. So step one says decide what you want from God. Have you made that decision of what you want? I want you to think in your mind as we're reviewing these steps. Let me decide what I want from God. So in your mind right now, you've decided right now as I'm speaking what you're wanting from God. Step two, it goes on to say, read the scriptures that promise the answers that you need. Are you standing on some scriptures? Get about three or four and just start going at the scriptures. Say, Lord, I believe. In Joshua, it even says this, that the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. It says therein day and night, and that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. But if you're not meditating and you're not reading the word, you're not going to know what you're supposed to be doing, and you're not going to know God's will for your life. So you got to take the scriptures in verse 2, and you got to take those scriptures and apply them to what you decided that you wanted. That's step 2. Step 3, we talked about ask God for the things you want. And you know how it says things? Well, I can only ask him for one thing because I don't want to be greedy. And I don't want to just come and, and just ask, be asking God for all my petitions. How many know a true Christian? You'll have your petitions in prayer, but you'll find yourself, those of you who are really seeking the Lord and those of you who are really just sold out, and if you're here on a Wednesday night, that means, you know, you got to be seeking God on a different level than just coming on a Sunday. So we know that when you go into prayer, you have petitions, but you'll find yourself interceding for other people more. And that's how you know that you're praying um, and you're seeking God's kingdom first. And then all these things shall be added. Isn't that good? So ask God for the things you want. Don't be shy. Ask him for the things you want. Of course, you know, if you start asking him for a million dollars tomorrow, well, that's probably maybe not the best thing for us because our character needs to be developed to handle that kind of money coming in. And the first thing we're, he's going to want to know is if that heart, if I gave them a million dollars, are they going to sell the 10% right off the top? Uh, amen. And if the heart's not going to give that 10% and it's not going to give the offering, and you know what? I may even throw a seed. I'll give a $5 seed on a million dollars. Oh, yeah, you see, I got you guys. Oh, no, you got to give abundantly. 
Hundred thousand, you throw an offering on there with between you and God, and of course the seeds between you and God. But I'm just giving y'all an example. Um, so we don't try to. The more money we get, the more short change we get because well, I got more now. Now the numbers are bigger, so I better not give. I better just give just enough. Amen. So decide what you want. Ask him for the things you want. Don't be shy. God wants to bless his people. Amen. And then on uh, step four, when you've done all that, believe that you receive. And then what does it say? And you shall have it. You believe that you receive it. Do you believe that you're going to receive what you've decided in your mind right now as I was speaking? I decided this is what I want from God. Maybe it's for yourself. Maybe it's for someone else. But the Lord says, according to your faith, so be it. You're standing proxy. You're standing in the gap for those things that you may need. And you're here tonight under the anointing, under the power of God. Because the Lord's word, the Lord will give his word to you to be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. And his word is life to those who find it and medicine and healing to all of our flesh. I know our flesh today needs healing. The body of Christ right now is getting assailed. And right now, as we are sitting here tonight, I want you to be interceding and standing for those who you have not seen here because there's great physical attack going on on the body of Christ right now, physically. So I want you to stand in agreement, and I want you to pray when, as the Lord, the Lord leads you to pray and intercede for our brothers and sisters who are under a great assault right now from the devil. But the devil's a liar. I said, all oh, the people watching online, I said, the devil is a liar. He is under our feet, and he is a defeated foe, and he's not going to win, and he's not going to TKO us. Amen. We're going to rise up, and we're going to say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, and we're going to believe that we receive tonight. Amen. You're not going to leave here tonight without believing that what you have wanted and thought in your mind, decided what you wanted, the things that you wanted from the Lord tonight. You're going to leave here knowing and believing that God is going to do them. And that's faith. And that's how we know God truly answers prayers. Because when we pray, we already know it's done. It's already been done. Ye were healed. Ye were prosperous. It's already done. We're just going to have to start walking it out. Amen. So I want you to go to the second to the last page. And we're going to finish this part out today. This part, this part, uh, part four. We're going to finish part four out. And then the, it's, it's really appropriate because the steps five, six, and seven it's seven steps to God truly answers prayers. And we're going to finish those out throughout the rest of the year on the Wednesday nights. And it's going to be just, it just, it's so fitting for where we are right now during the holiday time and, and all that stuff. So, so are we there? I want you to go to the top where it says our needs. Everybody there? Okay. Our needs have been provided for in Christ Jesus. Our needs have been provided for in Christ Jesus. Everything that you need has been provided for in Christ Jesus. Everything that we want, well, some things can be added, but it says our needs have already been provided for. It says here we may not always be able to see them, but they are there. Sometimes our flesh gets a little frustrated. I want to see it, Lord. I want to see it. We get frustrated. But the Lord says it's already done. And it says, it goes on to say, when sense knowledge truth contradicts revelation truth or the word of God, I start walking by revelation truth. Revelation truth is the word of God. Amen. I walk by what God says. That which is in the spiritual realm is made real in the natural realm through faith. Faith grasps it and creates the reality of it in our life. Therefore, when we pray, believe that you receive that which you are asking for and you shall have it. This is beyond our natural thinking. The natural mind cannot grasp, but we are to walk by faith and not by sight. And the Lord brought me to a scripture in Matthew chapter 17, and I want you to turn there because this story is powerful. It's going to help your faith tonight. God's going to bring understanding concerning some things that took place during this event with Jesus and the disciples. Um, let's see, Matthew chapter 17, and I want you to start with me at verse 14. Are we, are we there? Or when you, when you get there, just say, I'm there, or say, amen.
We have to believe that we receive it. That's the problem with Christians today, I think, is just there's a hard time believing that God really wants to do these things for you. We have a hard time believing that God wants to do the impossible in our lives. We know it. We have a general faith, and we believe our God, and we get excited. But when we're trying to walk these things out, and we're trying to really know that God wants to bless us in this manner that we're asking, we have a hard time. Our flesh has a hard time receiving the supernatural. It has a hard time grasping uh, on the faith, the kind of faith that we can have to believe for the impossible in our lives. But tonight, there's going to be a breaking around everybody. And as the word is going forth this evening, the shackles, the chains, everything's going to start breaking all around us. Everything that's hindering us tonight, it's going to go. Amen. There's a heaviness around the body of Christ. And it's attacking the body in a vicious way, especially the true Christians of the living God, ones that are truly living out a holy life, set apart for, the, for God's good work. Amen. So verse 14, are we there? Now, y'all are going to love this. This is a, a great faith increaser, this particular story. And I'm going to bring out some things maybe that you've heard before and maybe that you haven't. But when I was studying this, the Lord just kept dropping revelation knowledge through this whole uh, particular area of Scripture. So in verse 14, it says this. On, above it, in the, your, some of your Bibles, it's, it says, Jesus heals a demon-possessed boy. So let's go to the Scriptures. It says here, at the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and he suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. This man's son, he was demon-possessed. How do we know? Because if you do parallel studying and you read some commentaries, this particular, his son was considered a, a spirit of lunacy. There was a, a, a lunatic spirit. I don't know if you've ever been around or if you go out in public and you, maybe there's a young person or any person, it could be an older person, and they start acting a little crazy. Your spirit man, if it gets angry, if it starts getting like angry, that means that's a demonic spirit upon that person. If your spirit man uh, gets peaceful and you have mercy and compassion, that means that's a true clinical problem, that there's a clinical situation going on. And that's, a, you just stay sensitive to the spirit of the living God, and you'll start to be able to discern even children. Like if you go into a public place, and let's say you go into a restaurant, or you go in, and all of a sudden you sit down to eat, and all of a sudden there's a child screaming at the top of their lungs all of a sudden, right there next to you, screaming and screaming, and there's really nothing going on, and the parents are kind of just there. You can discern if it's a spirit affecting that child, or you can discern that that's a real cry and that's a real heartfelt cry from the child that needs something or that's hurting in some kind of way or that wants to be changed you can start to discern how many of you ever experienced that before amen amen and we just start praying at the table what I should you know really quiet of course not out loud and we start and then all of a sudden check please and they're gone it's like, oh hallelujah <laughs> because it's a spirit it's not the same thing as having mercy for a child that's really having a problem it's different it's a spirit that's attacking that child or a person that all of a sudden starts talking loud. All of a sudden. And my husband and I always seem to get, we seem to get, we sit down and nobody in the whole restaurant except us. And this person is just going loud. I'm talking super loud. I said, yep, it's for us. But we, we can discern that there's something and that the enemy is in operation. They don't know it, but we do. Because we can see and the devil knows who, the devil knows who belongs to God. Amen. We eyeball that devil, as Brother Shambaugh used to say. We eyeball that devil. <laughs> He's got to go. So this child had a spirit of lunacy. He, was a lo he was, had a lunatic spirit, and he wanted Jesus to heal him. He wanted Jesus to heal him. And he said, here, so I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. Oh, what was going on here? Verse 17, Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people. Oh, is that the, is that the kind of Jesus that we, talk, we hear about in, in, in Scripture? We hardly ever hear about that Jesus. How long must I be with you? How long must, must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Now, I want you to understand something. Jesus, if you go into Mark chapter 9, remember the Gospels are synoptic. They're seen together. But the account that Mark gives is a little more detailed, and it has a little bit more of a backdrop. 
When Jesus was approaching this man, or the man approached Jesus to, on his knees to ask him to heal, heal his son, Jesus had just come down from the Mount of Transfiguration. He just came out of the glory, and he was coming into where the crowds were here. And, and when the crowds saw him, it says in Mark chapter 9 that he approached the crowds and that there was a lot of turmoil and a lot of chaos and a lot of arguing and disagreements going on. So when you read this, you think... Because if you go on to read it, he rebukes, the, he rebukes the, the people, but he goes on and the disciples ask him why we can't cast out this demon. But if you understand the scripture and you do the parallel study and you go look at Mark 9, what was happening was Jesus, when he said you faithless and corrupt people, he wasn't directing that toward his disciples because there was people in the midst that were religious. There was people, there were the, the Jewish scribes, the Jewish uh, people, leaders were in the midst so there was, a, there was a, a, a friction going on between the Jewish people and the Christian and the Christian disciples here. And there was a bit turmoil and division and, and arguments. And Jesus is approaching. So you can imagine Jesus coming out of the transfiguration, the glory, and he's coming into all this mess, the division and, and all this stuff going on. So here it says, I brought him to your disciples that they couldn't heal him. Verse 17, Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people, talking really directly to the religious folks in the crowd. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me, Verse uh, the next verse 18. Then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy, and it left him. From that moment, the boy was well. Well, he was Jesus. He, he, you know, he, 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 of course, he was able to heal. The disciples weren't able to heal, but why? Why weren't the disciples able to heal? Watch this, verse 19. It's talking about faith, guys, talking about believing when you pray that you're going to receive it. Watch this. Afterward, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? Verse 20, he says, you don't have enough faith. Jesus told him, I tell you the truth. Even if you had, if you had a faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Do you know that the reason, and if you really do a study, because of all the religious folks around the disciples, do you know that that religion hindered the disciples from being able to cast out that demon from the demon-possessed boy? And if you don't know how to really study, or maybe if you kind of grazed over it and just took it, and without really studying it, you won't know the backdrop. But the reason that they couldn't move in that miracle, see, the disciples had, had already had miracles before. They had laid hands on the sick and saw them recover. They had laid hands on demon possession and got them de delivered. But here, there was an interruption because of all the religion that was around the disciples. And so they, they couldn't operate in the greater things at that time. Do you know that even Jesus himself would not operate in mighty things or mighty miracles when there was unbelief coming from religious folks? And, you know, today we have this movement. It's been going on where Islam, Christianity, and Jewish uh, religion or the Jews, Jews religion, Judaism have all come in trying to mesh together. And it, ha it started happening in the world, society, and the culture around us to try to mesh all this, because if we just mesh together, we just should love each other and receive each other. And I'll go to, to celebrate your Ram Ramadan, what's that called? The, the Islam Ramadan, whatever it's called. And I'll go celebrate this with you over here, um, the Feast of Tabernacles. I'll go celebrate this ceremony over here. Uh, you come over to my house and we'll, or we'll go to your church. And we got all this mixing going on. It sounds so beautiful. It sounds very holy. It sounds wonderful to be able to do that. But I can promise you, just like the disciples, just like Jesus, your faith will be hindered when you're around religion too much. you got to be careful. And you have, to, you have to know because holidays are coming up. You're going to be seeing friends. You're going to be going here. You might be going there. And you have to take a good self-evaluation. Is my faith going downhill? And if it is, I need to evaluate where I'm going, what I'm doing, and who I'm around. Amen. You can't operate in this anointing and mix this anointing with other religions. It doesn't work. I, I wish I could tell you something different. 
I wish I could be sugar-coated for you tonight, but I, my, my concern is the flock that God has given us. And I've got to tell you all the truth. That is my job. Because it's kind of like when, you know, when your parents, you were young, and your parents would tell you, you know, if you go do that, this is what's going to happen. Ah, oh, Mom, oh, Dad, yeah, that's not going to happen. And what would happen? The very thing that would tell you what, what, what the consequence is going to be. And the very thing that would tell you that would happen would happen. Right? So I'm like a spiritual parent. I'm, we have a spiritual authority that Pastor and I have been given for the flock here at the Hand of God Ministry. And so when we are given that authority and we have a certain insight, the Lord gives us a concern for our spiritual kid. So we're able to see things in a different light or in insight that you wouldn't have in your own life because you're not in charge of a flock like we are. So the discernment is going to be a little greater and the discernment and the insight is going to be a little deeper because we are your pastors. Amen. So as Jesus was telling the disciples, look, you couldn't cast them out because of unbelief because there was too much religion. How many know religion snuffs out the power of God? Religion snuffs out the truth because religion doesn't wants to be right. Religion doesn't uh, uh, religion rejects the power of God. Religion rejects the Holy Spirit. Religion rejects the fullness of Christ. And, and religion rejects the fullness of the gospel. Hallelujah. Because it's always trying to find something to, to uh, throw a dart at. It's always trying to interrupt the flow of the Holy Ghost. It's always trying to interrupt miracles and healing. Amen. And that's what was happening here. How many of you ever heard that before concerning this story? I know Pastor has because you studied like a, like a crazy man. But how many of you have ever heard that about this story? Amen. And it says here, the disciples asked Jesus privately. It was private. This was so, I love this part. They went to Jesus privately. How many know ministers and, and special things? Some things need to be said in private concerning uh, the runnings of a church concerning things that go on in ministry, things that go on um, in, in, a, in a body of Christ. Some things of those nature for Christians need to be kept privately, not thrown on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever those other ones are, Twitter. We, we don't get the, the things of the Lord are very special. The things of God are very holy, and we don't just toss them out like it's some casual thing over the Internet, amen, or online or on social media. It's It's private. And we give too many things for people to talk about when it comes to Christianity. We give them too much ammunition. And it goes here, it says here, you don't have enough faith, he told them. I tell you the truth, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, all you need is a mustard seed of faith. But if you get around religion, even that little faith will be snuffed out. Amen. So you want things to move in your life. You want the impossible to be done. You've got to really take an evaluation of where you are in your walk and where you're going, who you're around, and what you're doing, because you can't mix. You can't mix religions. And one day, I mean, I don't know, there's something being built somewhere over, I don't know if, I, I didn't get the city. I wasn't even sure if it's the Middle East. But there's a mosque, there's a Jewish, big Jewish synagogue, and a Christian center. Am I right, Pastor? It's being done here in America. I haven't gotten the, the location geographically yet, but how many know that is the biggest deception what the enemy's doing right now? There is no mixing. There is no mixing religions. The only thing we have for people that are not in Christ, serving, believing what Jesus Christ has done, full of the Holy Spirit, the only thing we have for them is Jesus. Jesus. So just know tonight, nothing is impossible with God. And do you know that verse 21 in the paraphrased version is not here, but in the King James, the American Standard, that verse 21 in King James, New King James, it says, this kind won't go out except by prayer and fasting. You or you want faith to move mountains? You know you got your little formula that I just shared with you about certain things that snuff out the power of God in your life. The second thing is, I'm telling you, fasting, I don't know, but Pastor and I have been led to fast a lot more lately than ever before probably in our Christianity. And um, let me tell you something. When you fast, if you fast in the, for the right reasons, you fast maybe when you're going through some things. Maybe you just want to hear from God. Maybe I just want to put my flesh down because it's very riled up because of all the things I'm going through. So I just want to add a little fasting to my prayer. A little fasting, I'm sorry, to my faith. Just like faith needs prayer for its development and full growth, 
A fasting is also needed for the same reason to add to prayer. So if you're believing for something, let's say there's a diagnosis. Let's say there's things that you are believing for, but you feel like there's obstacles. These are some of the things right here. And you can go home and study this again this, and put this sermon on again. And just it will remind you of where you are in your walk and how faith is interrupted. But it says here that you can add fasting to your faith. You can add fasting to your prayer. And I'm telling you, it says this kind go out. On the very bottom of your Bible, some of them may have an asterisk or a little note. And it'll say there on the bottom, uh, it says here, this kind of demon won't leave except in prayer and fasting. Amen. Does some of your Bibles have that at the bottom? That was the one that was left out in some of these translations. But it's very, very important to move faith. To, I mean, all you got to have is a mustard seed. But I'm telling you, all you have to do is line yourself up with what God is saying tonight. And you can believe whatever it is that you're asking for that will be done. And I promise you there will be a breakthrough. Amen. Go with me to James chapter 1, verse 19. And we're going to finish up here in James because this right here is just amazing. This is just a great way to cap off faith for the night because we're believing for what we're asking for. I know some of you say, I'm just praying in vain, Lord. I'm just throwing prayers out and nothing's happening. But you got to decide, be specific, be laser focused about what you want and be relentless. James chapter 1. I want you to start at verse 19. Yeah, verse 19. And we're going to kind of finish up here. Are we there? Now watch this. Listen to this. Understand this. My dear brothers and sisters, you must all be what? Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. What does that have to do with faith? You must be all quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Now, if you read James chapter 1 from the beginning, it talks about faith and endurance in trials. It also talks about uh, enduring through temptation because temptation comes from who? The devil. And then it goes on here in chapter 1 to listening and doing, which is the subtitle over it. It says, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. There's a formula here for your faith. It says here, human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So if there's an obstacle in your way, Maybe, maybe it's not religion or around religion, or maybe it's not the other things that we talked about. Maybe I fast, maybe I pray, I come to church, but maybe I have some issues in the listening and the doing. I read the word, I understand it, I believe my God, I love my God, but when I walk out the door, I don't apply anything that I learned from the pastor. I don't apply. So how is your faith supposed to operate if you're a, a hearer but not a doer? So this is what James is saying here. It says, so human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Living an unrighteous life, living outside of God's prescribed order, will bring in some things that are not from the Lord. It will bring in the hedge will come down. Things will come at you. You don't even know what's going on. It's like, why is this all happening to me? Say, like, oh, I mean, when my husband and I, we encounter things. Let's say something starts happening. Let me give you an example. We came back from out of town, and uh, we started looking online, because, you know, I didn't look online too much on the account. Looked on the account, and I see we see a $401.66 charge, and then we see a $51.66 and a $66 charge come out of our bank. Okay, we see it's from Xfinity. We had just moved over. It's been nothing but a nightmare, by the way. Great service, but, whew, the billing is crazy. So they start charging us, and so we said, you know what, let's get on the phone. Let's, let's call the we, – we knew it was a mistake. So we're like, okay, we just get on the phone, we call, we're there, and I think he was on the phone an hour or so. So he said, oh, no problem, Mr. Diaz, we're going to get that taken care of, we're getting that refund right now, don't worry, this was Monday. And so we said, okay, so Monday morning, we're done. Monday about lunchtime, we're, we're, you know, we're doing work, playing catch-up, getting ready for the week for church and ministry. And then we go up again, and this was a few hours later, 40166, 40166, 40166. Three more 4166. By the time the day was over, we had five 4166. So we had over $2,051 come out of our account in a matter of a few hours. 
Let me tell you, like sisters always says, I'm about to lose my Jesus. Oh, <laughs> we're about to lose our Jesus. I'm about to lose my position in the Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm about to knock, knock off my throne. I'll tell you, Pastor, thank God he took over. I tried to get in there. I was like, I'm not having it. He took over, and he says, I am not, because he said, it'll be seven to ten business days before we can correct it. I mean, our bank account's going, woo, and then, I mean, it was crazy. And I said, seven, to, he goes, seven, to, that's not going to happen. <laughs> he said, that's not going to happen. We are going to see refunds because whoever we talked to earlier, instead of giving us a refund, they charged us three more times. So it ended up being over two grand out of our account in a matter of hours. And, and then so you're saying, what's this got to do with faith? And so we prayed because we felt like there was a, a great attack. It was weird. It was just, we came back from vacation. You know how it is. Before vacation, things happen. And after vacation, things happen. And, and it's just some weird stuff going on in the spiritual realm. Have you all experienced some weird things going on these days? It's in the spiritual realm. It's in the unseen. And I said, we started praying. We started attacking, getting, getting, uh, taking authority over. And the one thing we prayed, I said, Lord, because they said it's going to be seven to ten business days. I said, seven to ten, ten, oh, two grand out of our account. I said, oh, we have to do this. And so I said, oh, my gosh, Lord, this is, this is not, this, no, this is not going to happen. And so we started praying. We said, search me, O oh Lord. Have we done anything? Have I meditated on the wrong? I mean, we started evaluating. Okay, I know I'm, I'm going to church. We only miss Wednesday for, for a vacation. So we, I mean, this is how we get the smallest thing that goes out of sorts. We start evaluating ourselves quickly. We say, okay, what about our commitment? Is our prayer in line? Are we reading the word? Lord, where, where is it? Search me, O oh Lord. But it has to do with money. So you know what I, I said? Lord, this is what I thought. I said, Lord, did I forget to tithe? That's what I was saying. I said, do we tithe for the, for the second part of, you know, the, the second time we got paid? Did we forget to tithe and offer? I know we're sowing seed all the time, but I had to go back on the books to make sure that our tithes and offerings were in line. And because they were in line, in a matter of 24 hours, well, from one afternoon to the next morning, all the money was restored because Wells Fargo stepped in and took care of everything in 24 hours and said it was going to be 7 to 10 business days. I re, he said, I'll rebuke the devourer. For your sake, I will bring down from heaven and I'll pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough to contain. I had a leg to stand on. Our tithes and our offerings were in line. Hallelujah. You've got situations happening to you. You've got situations happening to you online, out there financially, or things are starting to get weird. You know what? Am I tithing and offering? Because if I am, then I know, Lord, you're going to answer. If I'm not, if my money's not lined up with your word, then, Lord, I ask for your mercy. Let me start over again. I ask you to forgive me for not tithing. And, and Lord, I'm just, uh, I, I got to make sure I get this money back in line with you because I want favor. How many know the favor upon your life will be cut off? It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Amen. So we don't mess with our tithes and offerings. And I had to go check the books. Did I forget to tithe? I mean, this is the kind of research and investigation we do on ourselves and examination to make sure that my prayers are going to be heard because I don't want anything putting brass on the heavens when it comes to the, our prayers. So in 24 hours, that money was back in the account. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seven to ten business days became less than 24 hours. So we were very grateful so that's the kind of faith, that's the tenacity and the kind of faith that we all need. Amen. So it says here, get rid of all filth. What does that do? It interrupts your faith and evil in our lives. And humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. I can't tell you how many Christians that we come across over the, over the years that, they, I mean, they can go through some intense trials. I mean, I'm talking like some of the most intense trials, and they still don't get it. You're not even, you're not in church. You're not getting, you're not committed. You're, you're, you're not tithing. You're not offering. They don't get it. And it's like, I don't know if they can hear the wooing of God's spirit anymore, but I tell you, religion will snuff out the voice of God. Amen. Religion produces a dead letter. It gives us a dead letter. Religion, it interrupts everything. We, we know so many people that have that, are, that have become so religious in Christianity, what does that mean? It just means hypocrisy. Professing one thing and really not living it in any area of their lives, or maybe they're minus a few areas, but it shows. <laughs> it shows. So it interrupts our faith. We're believing for things, and we're, we're out of line in places, and that's the first thing Pastor and I were doing. Make sure that we're in line so I know how to pray. If I had forgotten to tithe, then I would have understood, okay, this is happening, and 
I deserve it because, you know, I, I left the door open for the enemy to come in and assail my fi- or sell our finances. And I started to be condemned myself before I found out that, that we did tithe. And so I said, okay, Lord, so my prayers, I assert them differently. But I was just, I, it, was a, it was an ugly, it's like I, I felt like somebody was slapping me across the face when that money kept coming out like that. It was like, a, it was vicious. It was a vicious attack on our, that's never happened before. And all the years we've been uh, together or in our bank accounts, never happened before like that. But, but God, amen, he stepped in quickly. And, and put us at rest. And it goes on to say this, but don't just listen to God's word. Here it is, church. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. What does that mean? People are fooling themselves if they think they can do a little bit of God's word and then their faith is going to move mountains. <laughs> People are fooling themselves if they think they're going to be blessed financially when they're not tithing and offering. It's, you're fooling yourself. It doesn't work. You can try it, and if you try it, and if you're successful of not tithing and you're prosperous, come back and please tell me, and I'll change my message. Hallelujah, please. Because I, I, I challenge the word of God. You can challenge the word of God, but it's going to be true anyway, and it's going to live out through you and through your life. Amen. So don't interrupt your faith in the area of finances. Don't interrupt your faith in the spiritual. Don't interrupt your faith in the area of the physical. You can still believe for God to heal you, whatever diagnosis maybe you have today. You must do what it says. It says here, don't just listen to his word. He says you must, everybody say must do. You must do. It's not, oh, I suggest, here's a helpful hint that you should probably, maybe apply some of the word of God. No, it says you must, James says. This is Jesus' half-brother. I mean, who would know? Who, he was anointed. He was a, a mighty man of God. He came to know Jesus, who he was, and believed in who he was after his resurrection. Can you imagine the, the, the trials around Jesus with his family who didn't understand what he was doing? They still didn't understand who he was. You must do what it says, the Bible says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. You can't do 70% of the word and expect 100% of the blessing. You can't do 30% of the word and expect 100% of the blessing. It has to be all. It has to be all. God will require of you what you know. What has already been planted, he will require of you. And then if a Christian doesn't walk in those things, you will know because everything around you starts to go a little crazy. And then you say, oh, wait a minute. My church life, my prayer life, my word life, it's all being interrupted, being hindered. There's a power and an anointing here for deliverance and to set you free and for miracles. And we have, and we have the faith to believe for the impossible here. Amen. And whatever's obstacles are in the way, they're being moved out of the way right now in this ministry. So it says here, for if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at the face, at your face in a mirror. He says, you were, you see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law, everybody say law, that sets you free. What law is he talking about? The law of Christ. Amen. The perfect law that sets you free. And if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. So church, I'm telling you right now, if you want your faith to grow, if you want your faith to move mountains, if you want your faith to, to move in from the regular realm into a supernatural realm, listen to this. The first thing is, and, and really reading the book of James really brought this out, there's got to be a full surrender. You want to believe to receive things from the Lord. You want to believe that you have them. Everything that you ask, everything that you pray according to his word, if you want, to, you want that for your life tonight, I don't want you to leave here without knowing something. There has to be a full surrender. If you, you surrender fully and then you back up from surrendering and then you surrender and then you back up then you're just going back and forth, so there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be hindrances to things, things that you're believing for. So there's got to be a full surrender. If you want your faith to work for the impossible, if you want your faith to move the mountains that are in your way tonight, you've got to have a full surrender. Second one, there's got to be a full yieldedness. How do, what does that mean, Pastor? That means you've got to be fully yielded. If God has called you here, most, most all of you here, and those online, some of you are not able to be here because some physical issues, but if God has called you here, there has to be a full surrender and a full yieldedness so that the favor of God can be around you. It doesn't mean you won't go through things, but just like the incredible trial we just went through with our money, and that's just one thing that I can think about because it just happened recently, just like you'll have when you, when you pray, you're confident that it's going to be done because you're in line with the Lord and you've lined yourself up with his word. 
So there's got to be a full yieldedness. You know that people don't yield in this ministry. I'll tell you the reason why over the years. There's three reasons. Number one, sin. Number two, religion. Number three, rebellion. You see, if people stay in religion or at, allow religion around them too long, they, and, then, and then the sin usually follows, what ends up happening, they'll end up in rebellion. And what will happen is all the heavens will shut off and the hedge will come down. Hallelujah. Rebellion, the Bible says, is it's witchcraft. We can't rebel. So if you ever get mad at a message or you get mad at the word or a counseling or something we give you, then that means there's not a full surrender. We've already been there, done that. We're trying to help you not go through some of the things that we've already been through. Uh, if, if there's something, a rejection or a resistance, or maybe you resist something or the way we run things or whatever it could be in the total hand of God ministry package, then there's an area that's not yielded to the Lord because there's a full yielding here at the hand of God ministry. Full, the counsel of God along with the Holy Spirit and all that he has to offer. He has preeminence in this place. So you got to be fully surrendered if you want your faith to operate in the supernatural. You got to be fully yielded. And the third thing, you got to be obedient to all known truth. You got to be obedient to all known truth. Fully surrendered, fully yielded, and fully obedient to all known truth. Everything that you know has true in the word of God, there's got to be a full surrender and a full yieldedness and a full obedience to start getting that faith as a mustard seed to start moving mountains out of your way. Do you have a mountain that's been in your way and you can't seem to get it thrown into the sea and you pray and you do? The message tonight will help you to know that when you pray and when you've applied what you've heard tonight, you will receive it. You believe it, you receive it, and you shall have it. Everybody stand.